So today I'm gonna show you how to use your smartphone to view the screen of your camera with all the info, allowing you to record it, snapshot it, or even do a live streaming. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Andrew, a Brazilian photographer and filmmaker living in Italy, and in this channel I help with the tech tools to be creative. So I came across this app when I was researching how to make better tutorials for you guys in a way that I could show the backstage, what was happening in the camera while I was doing it. So recently I've been using another app called Monitor Plus that I have already done a video about it on the channel and you can check it out clicking on the card over here and opening it on a new tab because both apps are completely different. Monitor Plus is aimed at being kind of like an external recorder in which you can add LUTs, you can see the focus peaking. On the other hand, USB Camera Pro is aimed at allowing you to view in real time the screen of your camera through the HDMI output, including even the info that you have on screen. Okay, so let me show you what you need to make it work and I'll show you the different functions inside the app in a second. Okay, so first of all, one of the main differences between both apps is that Monitor Plus uses only the USB connection but USB Camera Pro is actually gonna use the HDMI output, so you need an HDMI cable that suits your camera. In my case, I use the Sony a7 III, and this is a micro HDMI cable. Can be any kind of cable, just have to respect the type of port you have in the camera. If you have an a7S III, for example, it's gonna be a full-size HDMI, so you have to check it to be sure you get the right cable. Now, just one thing to pay attention is that the app developers recommend you not to use a cable longer than one meter for optimal connection between the camera and the app. So if you're thinking about buying only one cable to be able to connect the camera to your TV and also to the smartphone, I don't think it's gonna be a good idea. Now, in the case that you just wanna see the feed on a TV or a monitor, for example, you don't need the app and just the HDMI cable is gonna be enough for you. Instead, if you wanna use the app or you wanna use the smartphone or the computer to receive the feed, you're gonna need a capture card also. Checking websites like Amazon, for example, you're gonna find many different options, but mainly the decisions you're gonna have to make are based on the, which kind of HDMI port is available, so it has to match the cable that you bought before, and also which is the output cable so that you don't need another adapter. In my case, I got this one that you can see on the screen right now, which is a full HDMI female port on one side and USB-C cable on the other one, which matches directly my smartphone. And here there's also something that you should pay attention to. In this case, my smartphone is an Oppo phone that has already OTG enabled, meaning that it's capable to understand information that is received through the USB port. If your smartphone is not capable of doing that, then you're gonna need another adapter between the capture card and the phone. By the way, the capture card that I got enables a 4K feed in and outputs a 1080p feed. And I did like this for two main reasons. The first one is that I didn't really need the 4K output, and also because such capture cards are 10 times more expensive than the 1080p counterparts. Now the app has a free version that has the most important functionalities, but its main function is allowing you to see the screen and also to record it. And instead there is a huge ad right in front of it that just makes it almost impossible to be used without buying the pro version. Now to use it, if you're on a Sony camera, all you have to do is disable the control smartphone feature and just enable the HDMI output in the settings. Now, as soon as you connect the HDMI cable with the capture card inside your phone, USB Camera Pro is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask for permission to access all the data that is gonna come from the port. And if everything was set up correctly, you should see right away the screen of your camera. And on the main screen, you're gonna have this small icon here on the right that allows you to do the three main functions of the app, which are taking a snapshot, recording the screen itself, and also live streaming. Even like this is already really cool because you can use it as an external monitor. Now just pay attention that when you're recording inside the app, it's not actually recording on the SD card and the camera. You're just recording the feed that is coming from the camera to the smartphone. So if you actually wanna have that scene later, you have to press record on both of them. And by default, the audio that is coming is gonna come from the camera through the USB cable. If you want to override that and use the audio from the phone itself, you can do it in the settings. Now, if the screen of your camera goes black, don't find it strange because some cameras really do like that. Like for example, the Sony a7 III, in which whichever monitor you have attached to it is gonna have the predominance over the main LCD screen. Now, regarding the resolution of your final videos, if you're gonna be shooting 1080p, there's no problem at all. You're gonna be able with the Sony camera to record internally and also send the feed to the smartphone without any problem, without losing any of the features. But instead, if you switch to 4K, you're still gonna be able to see the image on the smartphone, but then you're not gonna be able to see all the info around the screen anymore. 
And in the case of the A7 III, for example, every time you have something external connected, like an external monitor or a smartphone, be it with Monitor Plus or the USB Camera Pro, you're not gonna have access to some of the features, like for example, the face autofocus in video. You're gonna be using the normal contrast autofocus, which is a bit of a bummer since this camera doesn't have a flip out screen. Anyways, one other feature that I found really cool in this app is that you can actually do picture in picture. Pic so at first I thought this was a totally useless feature, but actually I figured out that it could be really interesting to do some sort of backstage of how you're shooting because you can actually open the camera app on your phone. You can open the USB camera pro feed as PIP on top of that. And then you can simply record the screen of the phone to be able to make stories like this one you're seeing here right now. You can actually move it around, redimension it, but I experienced some bugs with it. Sometimes it would just like get stuck and I wouldn't be able to reposition or resize it the way that I wanted. So closing the app and open it again, just solved the issue. Now regarding the performance, I was very happily surprised with this app. Using the HDMI cable actually made me experience no lag at all. I could see the camera movements practically in real time and it didn't bother me at all to shoot just looking through the smartphone, it was perfect. Instead of other apps, especially the ones that allow you to have wireless connection, often you have so much lag that after a while it's just too boring to keep shooting like that. And now this adds a very cool tool for the tutorials or any kind of lesson that you wanna make online. This way you can really show what you're doing behind the camera. Just filming the back LCD screen is never a very good option. You always have trouble with reflections, you can't see it really well, focus. Now, one more feature that impressed me was the live streaming. And this is actually useful for two different things. In my case, I tried to connect it to YouTube directly to be able to make live streams, like for example, making a photo shoot on the streets. And all I had to do was to go inside YouTube Studio, grab the link and the key for that, insert it into the app, and automatically connected and started live streaming on the channel. And it was just perfect, perfect connection. Of course, in this case, I was inside here the studio with the Wi-Fi connected. But in theory, you could do it from anywhere. Depending if you have a good mobile connection, you would be just fine. Now, before making this video, I checked their page on the Play Store to see how are the comments. And I saw that a lot of people are having trouble with minor bugs here and there, depending on which kind of smartphone or which kind of application they wanted to use. So I recommend you to go over there and see if you can find the same case that you are planning to use it and if it's all fine or if there's any kind of issue that could be a deal breaker for you. In my case, with the Sony a7 III, just to record the screen and do small live streamings, I didn't experience so far any kind of trouble, so I really recommend it. But anyways, you can try the free version, see if it suits you, and then upgrade to the pro version later on. All right, remember that all the links for the products and also the apps are in the description below. And if you have any doubts or comments, please write them in the comment section. I always answer all the comments here on the channel. And if you're feeling like watching something else that can be interesting to you, check out this video over here, in which I tell you all about the other app that I mentioned during this video called Monitor Plus. All right, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Pro is that uh, dead? On the other hand, you <laughs> <laughs>